right, hello everyone. Um, so we're going to start by making sure you all have your headphones on. Uh, if you want to hear us, you will need uh, to put your headphones on. All good. Um, wonderful. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, JB Thiebaud. Uh, I'm a co-founder of the MIDI Innovation Awards, uh, which started three years ago. It's now the, the fourth year we're running it. Um, uh, we've started the MIDI Innovation Awards uh, to coincide with the release of the first specifications of MIDI 2.0. And the idea is to get uh, to celebrate innovation and help uh, all the uh, innovators, both on the people who make prototypes or established companies, uh, to release their products and, and for us to, to, to move them. So NAM, uh, the Media Association and Music Hackspace have partnered to make, to make this award. One of the prize is actually to exhibit here and you have all the winners of the MIDI Innovation Awards in this corner. So you'll see their product here, but after this presentation, you're welcome to go and meet them over here to try uh, their product by yourself. Um, so we have uh, two of the winners here. We're going to see videos. We also have uh, Laura Eskede here. Um, and we're going to start by uh, yeah, introducing uh, each of us. So over to you, Andrea. Hi, I'm, I'm Andrea. I'm uh, the creator of the guitar. It's a, it's a guitar, an acoustic guitar that midifies percussion so that you can control effects and samples and uh, anything that you can do with MIDI uh, just from the top of your guitar. Uh, and uh, I'm a final year student at Queen Mary University of London and uh, there's going to be a theme <laughs> across these awards about Queen Mary. And uh, yeah, that's me. Hello, I'm Max. I'm also from Queen Mary in London and I'm the creator of NETS, a mixed reality musical instrument where you wear a mixed reality headset and play a virtual instrument in front of you. An isomorphic keyboard that allows you to modulate timbre, pitch, and other attributes. Yeah. Amazing. I'm Laura Eskede. I'm an artist and entrepreneur. Um, I'm a long-time MIDI user, maybe not as much as some of the people in the audience who've been doing it for a really long time since the early 80s. And, but I have been doing uh, using a MIDI violin set up to control the Unreal gaming engine as well as other visual elements and that's kind of the main thing that I do when I perform is, is utilize those technologies. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so we're going to um, hear and see the first, uh, the first video which is a 90 second presentation of Nets uh, from Max Graf here. Uh, and then we're going to talk about, about the innovation aspect and, and hear from you um, what's, what's on the cards for, for NETS. All right, okay, Whoa. sorry about that. <laughs> this happened also during uh, the rehearsal. Uh, but it, no, okay. It wouldn't be a NAM without some tech things going on, right? Am I right? Exactly, exactly. Any, any presentation or any at all. show or presentation. Exactly. All right. Uh, it plays some redundancy the very poorly. <laughs> I don't know anyone who does that. You're supposed to play it really fast. An oak tone controller. <laughs> exactly, yes. It's not MIDI, yes. Exactly. As Athens says, it's not MIDI. <laughs> Thankfully. Uh, okay. It is rock solid technology. Ah, uh, here we go, here we go. I don't think they cannot hearing. hear anything. Okay. We fixed the video, now it's time for the audio. We fixed the video, but the audio is gone. Okay, I'm, I apologize about this. How many of y'all is it your first NAM? Anyone? First NAM? Oh, amazing. Here, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, both of you. Wow, incredible. Hey. Welcome to NAM. This is my Thank 15th you. NAM. 15th. Oh, I know. Anyone else been here 15 years? <laughs> no one else as old as me? OK. <laughs> How many of you have been here five or more NAMs? All right. 10 or more NAMs. OK. And I'm just going to say 15 again. OK, there's a few of you, yes. What about 20? <gasps> wow, 25? 30? OK, all right, wow. Yes. Kudos to the two of you. Wow, 25 plus years. That's incredible. Amazing. 
When yeah. did no, you can start? keep going because I need to restart oh, my okay, computer now. Okay, we keep now. going. Okay, so, all right. <laughs> I'm very sorry. A, when did problems Ram start? After problems. We could just we could just do popcorn style. What's your what's your favorite thing that you've seen so far? You could just yell it out. Anyone? Saxophones. All right, that's a very analog answer. I love it. <laughs> did you have something you wanted to say? No, no, no. I'm oh, okay, about I'll, that. I'll yeah. just keep going. Keep going. The what? MIDI 2.0 networking from this, is it AIM, AIM note? Okay, we should go check out that. Oh, yeah. yeah, the, the Oak Tone booth back there is, is an awesome booth. Woo! We know Jeff yes. back there. Uh, we use his tools for playback shows that we do. Um, so definitely check, check that stuff out. If you're looking for a way to control redundancy for your shows, Highly recommend. Anyone here a performer, live performer? Yes, a couple of you. Okay. These guys just had a show in LA last night, right? Oh, nice. Incredible. Nice. Yeah, big MIDI nerds over here, too. Also, we're in some of my courses and took it to the next level. Yes, amazing artists over here. Jules Jensen and Jackson Whalen. Definitely check their stuff out. And, uh, okay. Let's see, what else can I talk about? <laughs> Um, well, I think it's amazing that you guys have these these headsets that you can fully clearly hear us because what I'm hearing up here is a lot of stuff going on around me, but I think it's incredible that the MIDI Association put together this incredible headset. Well, yeah, I mean, I would look kind of dorky up here with it, but, you know, <laughs> I could put one on, I guess. Laura, you've been doing amazing. Oh, Thank yeah. you so much. I, I mean, <laughs> Big round of applause for Laura. <laughs> Uh, how how are we doing? We're doing good. Try we're it? doing good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, fingers crossed. He's going to play Let's at normal speed. Crossed. Here we go. You have sound. I believe I'm hearing it from here, but I'm, I'm not too sure. No sound. It's it's going through the HDMI, so it's it's on the console. Actually, I lied. My instrument does not produce any sound. Shall we resume? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe we could talk. We could have a discussion about your your instrument while we're waiting as well, oh, since that's, that's what we're up here to discuss. Do you want to just talk a little bit about it and, and how you created it and, and what inspired you to create this instrument? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, I created it as part of my PhD research at Queen Mary and. My whole PhD is about mixed reality musical instruments and how we can use mixed reality technology in order to make musical instruments. And this particular one I created with a jazz pianist and music producer. So we worked together for like six months and we had design sessions, we tested it, we had like iterative design process. And we essentially wanted to have an interface that's like two dimensional but can be extended into 3D, which is currently like in the works. I'm not gonna see that in the video quite yet. Uh, but the idea is like similar to other isomorphic uh, interfaces that you have a grid that you can move around on and basically learn uh, melodies, chord progressions only once. So if you play a major scale starting from any point on this interface that you're seeing here, you can move to any other point, use the same shape of your hand, the same sequence of movements, and you will get the transposed melody in any key. And he, as a jazz uh, pianist, found that super enticing because it allows you to modulate very quickly and very easily while you're playing. But yeah, are we on? We are on. I don't think we have any sound, but you can you can see uh, in the interface what uh, with the headset you, you can uh, how yeah. how Nets works. Uh, so I apologize about the sound, but please go and see Max after this, uh, and uh, for the next one yeah. we will have the sound ready. Um, so the video is essentially a little bit older. You can see the background faintly, perhaps, in black and white. Now we have full color, so if you come and check it out, you will see like the full mixed reality experience. Essentially, you place it on a surface, a table, and you play it with your hands, so there's some hand tracking involved. And we run a little bit of uh, AI on the device to do uh, hand recognition, gesture, gesture recognition essentially allowing you to play different things within the same interface by changing how you hold your hands and yeah I have a couple of questions so what kind of 
gear do people need just for the, the layman who's never done anything in mixed reality before? What kind of equipment do people need to use this? So it's designed to run on pretty much all modern commercial uh, virtual reality and mixed reality headsets. I mean, if you play it in VR, you won't get the benefit of seeing like people around you. So it's harder to play like with other people. With the one that we have right now, I'm using the Quest 2 and Quest 3, so the, the newest ones from, from Oculus slash Meta. And I mean, these are consumer devices, so they're relatively cheap. You can get the two for like, I think, $200 by now, and the three for 400 something like that. So yeah, I'm, I'm aiming to get it to run on pretty much all modern uh, devices. Apple Vision Pro. And the Apple Vision Pro next week. Amazing. I have a question for you, Laura. I mean, oh, would you yes. see yourself uh, using this? Uh, and do you think it's be it would be better used in performance or for practice? I was studio. thinking about it for performance, personally, um, and also I, I did a discussion yesterday on some of the new AI technologies with scales and chords that's coming out, and I really feel like when you started talking about how it's easy to learn these chord shapes in using the software, I thought that was something that I would use in a performance, because as a violinist, I'm definitely more of a melodic player, and chords and scales, well, not scales, but chords are something that I struggle with, finding some interesting chords. And as you said, this is really like uh, geared towards people that want to play like a jazz musician, right? Yeah, OK. Yeah, so I, I can definitely see myself performing with it. That would be really incredible. Um, it's also just, you know, when you're performing this kind of, with this kind of technology, um, how do you feel like you're not disconnected to the audience? Is it because it's mixed reality, you can have that kind of uh, relationship with the audience? Do you want to talk a little bit on that? Yeah, that was the whole or one of the like foundational ideas from my PhD that we don't do it in virtual reality where you're basically completely immersed, but we do it in mixed reality where you like, by definition, have a connection to the world around you so you can like see other people, see people in the studio, see people on stage. I mean, I have one thing to say about performance, like the way it is right now and the way the like technology that it runs on right now is still in the very early stages. So like what I told people today and in the last few days was that it's kind of like these, these headsets are basically the Nokia 3320, so the old Nokia brick phones right now. Um, but we're seeing a lot of, of progress and a lot of yeah, quick jumps, very, very quick jumps. So I'm hoping to get it to a, to a level of where people can actually just put it on and feel confident within a couple of minutes or half an hour playing with it. But yeah, please come and try it out and get a feel for it yourself. Amazing. Great. Well, thank you very much, Max. A round of applause for Max. And we're going to uh, have the thank next, uh, the next um, uh, video, which is not x uh, It should be uh, but the guitar. Um, so it's a slide f uh, five, I think, Avan. Uh, I'm going to try to put it. Oh, okay, okay, here we go. The guitar is our augmented acoustic guitar prototype built by myself, Andrew McPherson, and Mathieu Barthé at Queen Mary University of London. The instrument looks and feels like any regular old guitar but inside it has five piezo sensors that send signals down to an artificial intelligence engine tracking which part of the hand hits the body. The heel of the hand controls one sample, whereas the rest of the hand controls another. It allows morphing from one sample to another, just with hand technique alone. The hitar also outputs a unique description for each hit as a MIDI control change. It can be assigned to parameters such as the stick position of a snare drum sound. The HITAS technology is useful to performers, but it's also a tool for composers to get a wider range of sounds from a single tool all at once. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Adan, for nice. the technical uh, issues. Uh, well done, Andrea. So thank uh, you. I imagine that um, Laura, as a violinist, using technology on your strings. I have strings. so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, go, go ahead. Uh, I go. have a suggestion for you okay, at the end, by okay. the way. <laughs> Tell me. What's your suggestion? Uh, which is something like that on the violin is definitely on the cards. And, OK, uh, yeah. OK. Right on. 
Yeah, because with my the software that I use, uh, it's called MIDI Merlin, and it's an audio to MIDI tracking software. But mm. there are limitations with that not having the actual. Do you call them piezos? What do you, what do you call the pickups? Yeah, I, I've got three sensors that are resting just under sensors, underneath yeah. the body. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's all audio based, so it just captures the first few milliseconds after a hit, and it extracts the features through machine learning from there. From yeah. that. So I noticed there's two cables coming out of the instrument. What are yeah. those for? Yeah, the, the, those are. Uh, those are in the prototype, two stereo cables so that I can get the signals out. There's actually three, there's a third that's hidden. Oh. Uh, but the, 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 the other two sensors are actually sort of redundant. They're part of the prototype, but they're not, they're not strictly needed for the technology to work. Amazing, yeah, and uh, yes. go ahead. Uh, but uh, that, that technology can be completely self-contained. So in, uh, you know, in the final iteration of, uh, of the technology, it's gonna be all from within the guitar. It could be actually even wireless, both audio and MIDI. Okay, and so if people have a guitar that they like already, can they bring it to you and they have absolutely it? can? Okay, yeah. okay, and then not right now, but very yeah. very soon. Okay, check soon. back by round about July. Just fire an email to me. <laughs> yeah, are you are you training people to help set up these guitars? Uh, no, I'm I'm, I'm actually miniaturizing doing, everything. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm doing the legwork and the software ah. in order to just make it round from. And uh, so what? Uh, so, so you were uh, controlling the Spitfire software in that video, right? We, when you we did had the a, percussion. Yeah, we had a yeah. partnership with, yeah. uh, like as a university with Spitfire. So we, uh -huh. uh, well, I'm, I'm just going to say it the way it is. We just, just had some licenses running around. And uh -huh. I thought, well, it would be nice to just not be confined within uh, drums and try something else. And actually right now at the booth, I've got demos to control effects. For example, I'm controlling octave as going up and down, depending on how you strike the body. So, and, and with it being MIDI, you can assign it to, uh, to anything and it can be a, a stage control for so many other things, for loops. I mean, it's, it's an octone from within the guitar, but I don't want to steal anyone any business, really. Yeah, and you mean the booth, is that the booth over there? Yeah, okay, booth the over booth there, yes. Right there, okay. So if people want to come check it out after this, they can Absolutely. head over there. Yeah. Okay, awesome, yeah. Good morning, well, uh, let's thank Andrea and, and Max and we are gonna welcome our next two speakers. Yeah. Guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Yes, thanks. Uh, so, uh, welcome. Uh, we have Simone from Audio Modeling. Uh, Lily, Emmanuel, I'm sorry. Simone over there. Um, uh, we won the um, Mid Innovation Awards in the commercial software category with Camelot Pro. And we have Bruno from uh, Intuitive Instruments who won the commercial uh, hardware prototype with x -Key. So uh, we'd like to introduce yourself. You're the next on the video. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Emanuele Paravicini, but anyone knows me as Lele. <laughs> I'm the CTO of the company, Audio Modeling, and our core uh, business is to make um, virtual instruments based on physical modeling. But we have also started a project, uh, uh, Camelot Pro, that is a uh, uh, platform for the live performance uh, for helping musicians in the live performance so you can connect audio and MIDI devices and automate uh, the show basically it is a powerhouse of MIDI and uh, we're going to see the video um... in the world of music the stage is where the magic happens but behind the scenes a multitude of instruments and technicalities are being managed that can get overwhelming Introducing Camelot Pro, your all-in-one solution for seamless musical performances. Camelot Pro is a complete performance environment that includes a set list manager, digital mixer, software instrument and effects plug-in host, PDF music score reader, multi-track audio player, flexible audio routing, cross-platform compatibility, and automation that can entirely redefine your system for each part of each song. At the heart of Camelot Pro lies its innovative MIDI system, a highly advanced MIDI patch bay and router with an entire suite of MIDI processing and management tools. Camelot's smart map system anticipates the MIDI 2.0 revolution with plug and play simplicity achieved using classic MIDI 1.0 communications. Camelot Pro puts all your performance tools in one place, working together harmoniously like the Knights of Camelot seated at the round table. With Camelot Pro, musicians can focus on what they do best, playing music and expressing themselves. Say goodbye to complexities and technical roadblocks, and hello to the stage presence you've always dreamed of. 
Connect with our vibrant community on Facebook groups and dive deeper into Camelot Pro's endless potential by exploring our knowledge base at kb.audiomodeling.com. Right on, so uh, good video, thank you. Um, <laughs> We've got a fan club over here, yes. all right. <laughs> Um, so, Laura, you, you're a very experienced show programmer. You worked on yes. a super big stages. So, something that can sequence MIDI, organize different uh, setups or different songs, that's something that you probably have worked on before. What, what do you think? Absolutely. I mean, it, it seems really interesting to me. I just want to know how did the concept for this come together? Was there, like, you saw that there was something lacking in the industry that was simple and easy that was just based for live, live performance. I just want to know more about that. Yeah, basically we have seen that on the market there are several solutions for the live performance, but they, they all, um, uh, let's say, are focused on one task. So there is a very good PDF reader, a very good uh, multi-track player, but we haven't found uh, uh, all-in-one solution. So we started from that uh, need. And then, while we were developing and being a MIDI association member, we started using MIDI uh, very deeply. Uh, for example, we, we can, uh, uh, through MIDI 1.0, we have anticipated a bit the MIDI 2.0 concept, um, querying, for example, um, workstation and synthesizer to get uh, patch names or hardware parameters and uh, uh, so we, we have mapped probably 100 devices where you can just push a, bu uh, push a button and, and get a patch list and, and other parameters yeah, from, so from it's, the keyboard. So it's not like the old, um, I'm going to send a patch change message out and hope that it comes back with the right one. You actually know that it's the right one. Yeah, exactly. Because you can see the name. But uh -huh. instead using the numbers, so bank select and program change, yeah, yeah. you see you see the name. So uh, the user interface um, is very easy for, for uh, a musician that um, it doesn't need to know te technicalities to, to use the, the keyboards or other devices. So is this geared towards beginner, intermediate, is, there, is it just for all levels? Yeah, we have uh, designed the, the, the interface uh, with levels, so uh, hierarchy levels. So at the first level is very simple and uh, anyone can use it very easily. But if you are a nerd that you, you want to program in very deep. Who's a nerd that's here? <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. And you want to program it deeply. You can do it and expand and expand and uh, you, you can uh, add any message. You can apply transformation. You can uh, uh, use it as a, a digital mixer, making your own uh, audio routing uh, inside Camelot. Incredible. So a lot of hardware instruments you went through and precisely uh, took all of the, the patch information and the yeah. presets and all that and just loaded it into there. So it's, I mean, that must have taken some time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's why. That's, that's very, it's a very worthy yeah. of that. Yeah. We, we have spent a lot of time also collaborating with the uh, manufacturer, for example, with Yamaha, with uh, Roland uh, and other, other brands. They helped us uh, building these maps, but it takes a lot. And we are eagerly uh, awaiting for MIDI 2.0 to have a seamless. Uh, Yes. Uh, query and connection with the instruments. Yes. Have you tried with any MIDI 2.0 device already, like the, yeah. the Roland uh, that we saw earlier in the previous demo? No, we we had a prototype uh, at the uh, NAM show 2019, if I remember well, uh, with a montage, a modified montage with a, a MIDI very early MIDI 2.0 implementation, and uh, we had it work working. So. We are now uh, waiting for implementing MIDI 2.0 with the current uh, specifications, yes. What, what feature is like your favorite feature that you want to just brag about right now? Uh, uh, with MIDI 2.0, you mean? Or with your software. Ah, with, uh, with our software. Um, the main feature that we have now or that we 
are going the, to add. But right now, like when if someone was to use it right now, what's like one thing that you would want them to know? Like we just ah, saw okay. a video and it was like yeah. there's a lot of cool things. The, uh, you basically you can automate uh, your patch changes. Uh, so if you have a, a timeline running, you don't have, for example, for uh, also for guitar players, and we have uh, some demos there. Uh, they uh, do not need to play to to push uh, uh, pedal board anymore. So they just focus on playing, and uh, the software do the rest. Amazing. Well, that that sounds great. Does that sound good to y'all? Yeah, I want to do as little work as possible on stage. So anything that helps me do less work is incredible. Yeah. Come to our booth. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, thank you very much, Emmanuel. Big thank one of you. My pleasure. Emmanuel. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, the winner of the hardware, uh, commercial hardware product, uh, Bruno Verbrug. So, would you tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and this product? Yeah, hi everyone. So, I'm Bruno Verbrug uh, from Intuitive Instruments. Uh, we won the, so we are very proud to, to, to win uh, this year the best commercial uh, product of the year with the X key. The X key is, um, as you can see, um, isomorphic hexagonal. MIDI MPE controller, which means that each of the keys you can bend it in whatever direction. You have three axes of um, controls, and it comes with our patented uh, new layout of the keys. And um, yeah, Roger Lin was part of the jury. Roger Lin was one of our supporters. I hope you were so raw, but maybe not. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, because we we try to um, give to uh, people an alternative to the piano keyboard, and we are focusing on expressiveness because we believe it's um, I mean the future of digital instruments. Yeah, I mean that's it. All right. Well, let's uh, let's watch the video now. So I have a question uh, again for, for Laura, and, uh, and uh, I'm very curious about your sure. thoughts. You were, I think, the very first Ableton Live certified trainer. So you have, I guess, a lot of familiarity with with push controllers. Uh, and so, what does an isomorphic layout mean to you? And uh, do you have any questions for Bruno as well? With the yeah, with yeah I mean, well, first of all, I love the video because it's like show don't tell, right? It's like very expressive and you're showing with the music and I think that's really interesting because a lot of times people are telling and then you don't get to actually experience it so well done on that. Um, how did you, again, this is a similar question to before, but how did you come up with the idea to create this? Like what in the, there's a lot of different controllers out there, right? But what was the impetus to, to create your own? Okay, it's, it's a long story I would say because it started uh, 15 years ago. Um, 15 years ago, um, uh, my ex-associate, who was a mathematician, a mathematician professor, he came up with this uh, invention, this new layout of keys. He wanted that notes that sounds well together in the sense of harmony, being just right next to each other. So um, to divide the time, it taken in hands to to uh, figure out how to play the harmony, and in a certain sense, like to have a better access uh, to harmony. 
without learning all the scales and, uh, and all that stuff, right? And, and so we build uh, already like four um, different electronic music instruments. But uh, in the sense, I would say like electronic instruments, not control surfaces, not controllers, but instruments. So um, we had one that it calls the Dualo, and it had two keyboards like, like uh, you, you put on your belly and, and you wear it like an accordion. And because of accordion style, uh, many people didn't understood what we've done and thought it was an accordion. And so three years uh, later, we decided to put expressiveness on our keyboard and to make it in a form, uh, form factor that is more understandable for everyone. So it's tabletop, it looks like many other uh, key, uh, controllers. But don't get me wrong, this is an instrument. It, we could have put strings or reeds behind our uh, layout of the keys. It just it would have made just one sound. But we are in the 21th century, and why do we keep on uh, playing just one sound where there, you have lots of synthesizer everywhere? So um, we decided to just use sensors and to make it a digital instrument. So we have this ambitious to say, like, if you take a, a push, an Ableton Live, a push is a very nice control surface for a music production software, but it's not a digital instrument. Un unless you spend dozens, hundreds of hours playing in it, it will become your instrument. But uh, you, you know the difference between like playing a jazz solo on your um, violin with an X key, trust me, you can play a jazz solo. Yeah. If you use Lele uh, audio modeling, um, saxophone, physical modeling, very, very nice sound, we give you the gesture, we give you the finest of a real instrument. We use very top of the end uh, synthesizer, and then close your eyes. Make somebody play with it. Make somebody give expressiveness to the digital sound, some humanity. Put more human in the sound, and you get a new instrument, a digi digital instrument. And this is where MIDI 2.0 is going to push us very, very, very in the future. I love that. I love and I love that it's called intuitive instruments. Yeah, I would love to, to try. Yeah. Yes. This is, the, the action is a little bit more forgiving here. It's a little bit more... Yeah, it's definitely squishy. something that is yeah. different. So people it's have different. to touch it. Yeah. Like, but not quite as squishy as some of the other controllers that are MPE that I've tried that are a little hard to exa uh, tame. Ex yeah. Exactly. It's very squishy. And you need it because you need your finger to go inside the key to really feel like how deep you are in the key. If you take your Ableton Push 3, which is... Which, uh, a very amazing control surface. It's very hard, so yeah. you don't get the feeling of what you have when you put your um, finger on a screen, on a string, on your on your neck, on the neck of your uh, violin. Yeah, you are, you know the pressure, and it's very yeah. important. Well, and also this is very portable, so the size factor is very yeah. portable. So, yeah, and I love the name Intuitive Instruments because, like you said, you can blindfold, close your eyes, and play this and still have a really good time with it. Yeah. Um, Whereas some of the other instruments, it takes a lot of practice to get good at it. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's really great. But at the end, cool. it's still an instrument. So it's a matter how much effort you put inside your instrument right. and how much satisfaction you get. We, we have uh, chosen to make a very nice loop. So give me a little effort. I will give you a little but fast satisfaction. And then give me more little effort, I will give you back fast satisfaction. And this is how you create the loop where it becomes your friend mm. and not your enemy. Yeah. And, I, and I used to play the trombone. So we are like, kind <laughs> you know, I know, I know what you use, the, the time you spend on your violin to, yeah. to know how to make a, a proper sound. It's very hard at the beginning. You really have to, to, do, to put a lot of effort, you know. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, this is lovely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Bruno. A round of applause for Bruno. Um, next up, uh, we're, we're going to have a conversation and then followed by a QA. and a But um, I suppose the, the open-ended question now that I want the, you innovators to, to contribute and, and, and those who are here as well, um, to, you know, how can MIDI help innovation 
uh, for music performance uh, as well as, as music production and all of the different um, arts that you know are supported here at NAM. Um, what, what are your thoughts around innovation in, in a wider sense or and from your perspective? Maybe I can start. I mean, sure. as I said, we are trying to um, give to uh, anybody uh, the satisfaction of playing an instrument, and I, I think MIDI 2.0 will help us a lot in the sense of today, if we want to integrate sounds like audio modeling sounds or whatever, and we have um, knobs, but we we want to know the parameters. We don't to have the name of each of the parameters and things like this. So today it's very hard because um, nobody um, use all the specification that all the different uh, format uh, ask for. And so we really believe uh, MIDI 2.0 to be something that will uh, allow people who doesn't know about techniques to have a, a more straightforward access to like profile. I mean, profile is an amazing thing. So. Every, every, every MIDI devices or uh, software said, okay, this is what I expose, do what you want to do. So it will allow us to create very more straightforward, more, very more smart uh, devices connecting to, to, what, uh, to each other. So creating much more intuitive and seamless uh, communication, yeah. So w what else do you, uh, can you think of? Uh, Laura, what I do you think? I just wanted to echo that. Yeah, I mean, making it more accessible, because obviously MIDI's been around for a long time in the 80s, and it was like, what is this technology? And then there's a small group of people that really knew how to harness it. And now we're 30 years later, and we're approaching on this new paradigm. And I think it's really beautiful that there's this technology that allows more people to be involved in speaking the language and to level up their performances and their productions using MIDI and just, you know, to see innovations like this and, you know, your software that makes it easier for people to, to perform that, you know, before we didn't have. I just think that's a really beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah I, I can say uh, that we have anticipated a bit this uh, paradigm and I'm happy that MIDI 2.0 um, goes in, in that direction of making everything really accessible, really um, seamless uh, with a seamless configuration. Also, it's good to have MIDI CI to query the um, uh, the devices uh, and to have a mandatory bidirectional communication. So you get the feedback also, not just um, a control that is uh, uh, passive for, from the point of view of the generator, let's say, but you have also feedback and. and this opens up a lot of um, new scenarios, in my opinion. Right. And, and uh, for you guys, I don't know if you have a microphone, but um, I, the mini innovation what supports, uh, you know, the, the proto people who make prototypes. And, and these two winners are, are representative of, of, you know, the, the world of innovators who, who start there. And, and this could very well become products uh, in, a, you know, in a few years, fingers crossed, yes. Uh, but I'd love to hear your perspective. So we have one using AI to, to transform gesture into, into other sound, and the other one using VR to make music. So these are very interesting perspectives. Would you have um, a quick word to say uh, if I pass you the mic? You can to come on stage because we've got to have feedback otherwise. Uh, maybe turn down the monitors. All right. So since I've been uh, asked about artificial intelligence specifically, there's, a, there's an interesting thing about what MIDI 1.0 did uh, to some musical instruments and didn't do for, for others. Of course, it was thought about around the keyboard, but it had some uh, some minor successes in, in other instruments, but it, uh, but it didn't quite succeed in in, uh, in applications like the guitar. And uh, the one likely reason for this, and you know, take me up on that if you have any other opinions on it, is the fact that uh, the the interaction by humans is quite messy, and it's quite a bit richer than the way it's represented by MIDI. Uh, and uh, rich, but also quite quite unpredictable. And the uh, the the marriage between MIDI 2.0, which is a slightly richer paradigm, but not too rich, so you're not really sending down super complicated messages like, you know, all the physical quantities of the interaction. And artificial intelligence, whose job is to compress and simplify and represent at a higher level what's happening in the interaction 
but uh, between the musician and the instrument is a perfect way forward to really embrace other types of uh, other types of instruments, wind instruments, guitars, where MIDI 1.0 couldn't quite cut it yet. So this is where I see the marriage between AI and, and, and MIDI 2.0. I mean, I think pretty much everything has been said about MIDI 2.0, I believe. Uh, in terms of VR or XR specifically, oh, good. Um, I mean, the combination of MIDI and XR technologies is something that I would say goes hand in hand because like, these technologies try to like, represent as much as possible of the real world, but in a digital way, which means that like, if you if you think digital way musically in a virtual but still kind of real world it's kind of it goes without saying that you will need something like andrea said that will be able to capture all of the like weird quirks and like subtle glitches that you will get from digital technology that tries to represent the real world because in this conversion from the real to the digital which is like exactly where xr lives there will be these glitches. If you come and try out my instrument, you will see these glitches for yourself. It is very annoying, but it's also like, you can, you can work with it, right? And I think that, yeah, something like MIDI 2.0 will be very, very helpful in working with that kind of stuff. All right, thank you very much. So, so um, thank you to all the panelists. We're gonna have now a series of uh, Q&A. Uh, if we have any questions from the audience, uh, either for uh, one of the panelists, for Laura, um, or your perspective, share your perspective about uh, innovation and what you'd like to see happen. Uh, if you have any questions, just raise your hand and we'll uh, pass you a microphone. Okay, I, I didn't see any questions, so I'm gonna come back in here. So do you have a question other than for us? No, I, I, I don't have a question. No, no question. But I do have a comment. I, I just want to give a shout out. So what happened, we had a little problem with the video. And so I took control over there. Uh, and I'm using a piece of software, Jeff Robbins from Visibox, who actually entered the MIDI Innovation Awards. Uh, it's a very cool piece of software and it allows you to trigger stills or videos very easily. I happen to have, have all of the MIDI Innovation Award videos on there, and I was triggering it from a stream deck, and I could look and I could see, you know, again, easy to use. I could look on the stream deck, see what the video was, push the button, and it played. But the cool thing about Visibox is it does that video and still triggering using, guess what? MIDI. MIDI. Yeah, yeah, so it, it is awesome. So, JB, thanks, Laura. All of the people were actually all in the shot. I was actually moving the camera and, uh, you. you know, I don't know how we pulled this off, but we pulled it off and thank you all for showing up and participating. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank you. everyone. And don't hesitate to go and visit uh, all of these products that you've, we've seen here. They're on demo over here in the MIDI Innovation Awards corner. Thank you.